Hit me with the hardcore. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bat, bat, bat. Godcast episode 144. Chill. Let them piano keys, them chords. Them drums bang, baby. Uh. Stray Fuego Studio, BCMG in the building. Cheers. CEO of Rozo, a.k.a. Rose. Avery AF Picks. Back for the first time. VSOP Bloodshot. Crack. Your boy Burns. Shout out Dolly. Shout out Brother F. Back. International F. Let's go. You know when you hear them keys, it's about to break down and go crazy. Cheer, cheer, cheer. We back at it. Welcome back. Welcome world. Welcome world. Episode 144 of the Great American Hip Hop Debate Podcast. I am the brother Burns. As always, to the right, I got the brother BS. BS to the OP. You know what it be, man. We out here repping the, M- uh, the LBE. Rocking that. A blah, 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 blah. <laughs> RBL today. Get it Yo, together. Nah, got for real. The those RBL today, man. those you know shirts are fire. I got the shirts, you know what I mean? So make sure you go check that out. Yes, check blood. It. Um, We ain't tell you. My bad, BS, to cut you off. No, no, but no, we no, got correct. the shirts, bro, finally, from yeah. uh, Raised by Latino Godcast. All the collaborations. Yes. Uh, Shout out to the brother Vic. Oh, Shout out yeah. to Sis Ev. We got our right. shirts. Raised yeah. by Latino. We are hip Raised by Latino. Godcast. That's we right. are hip hop. Place your orders available now. Raisedbylatinos.com. Order two, three. Get one for mom, Dukes. Get one for the baby. Get one for everybody, man. Get yeah, one for, this get shirt's one for wifey so, so she can wear it like to bed. Yeah, some shit, yeah. Shout out to that. <laughs> <laughs> we got BCMG founder, CEO, artist, Rozo, aka Rose, in the building. Welcome, my brother. Thank you for being here. My guys, my guys, thank you got you the brother me. Avery, a.k.a. AF Picks in the building. Thank you for being here, my brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, we yeah. got a lot of stuff to get into. We got a lot of conversations to continue from last episode regarding yeah. AI, regarding Jim Jones, regarding Jadakiss, regarding Pusha T. We're going to get into the brother Arozo, a.k.a. Rose uh, catalog. He's got a project out right now, Broke But Not Poor. Go check that out. He's got singles out right now. You can go download Mola, download Can Relate, download Drugs, my favorite joint, download Everybody, download On The Road, download Don't Make Sense, download Trackstar, and what's the name of the joint you got with the brother Gatsby? Let You Go and Paradise. There's two of them. Go go check those out. Shout Shout out out to CG. Shout out to CG. Um, That joint, Let You Go, man, that's probably one of my favorites from what I heard. So everybody, make sure y'all go check that out. Uh, we're also going to talk BCMG. I want to get into all your responsibilities, all your uh, struggles, duties. how it feels to have to manage six or seven artists, six or seven grown men. Why ain't no ladies on BCMG? I want to know that. I want to know what's the plan for this year, the next year, the five year, the 10 year. I want you to take over like freaking cash money. Um, and we're going to get into all that. But before we do that. Um, we're going to get into the conversation that continues from last episode. So last episode, Blood, first of all, shout out to you. Welcome oh, back. You yeah. weren't on last episode. I know you was out handling business. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm back to the future, baby. What's good? And um, how's your um, how's your stitches, bro? You had like 150 stitches, right? Yeah, I got buck 50 behind the back of my neck. Be- right. Behind my ear and shit. I'm good, bro. It's looking good, legit, man. The stitches are out. They they melted or uh, dissolved. I got my stitches in. Oh shit! <laughs> Pretty boy, blood is back. Damn, bro, that shit sounds. Shout out to that. I'm back stitches. to yeah, bro. Back to my handsome ways, baby. That's right, That's kid. Welcome back. Welcome back. Handsome man. gangster. Uh, um, shout out to all the babies, oh, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah. Um, shout out to Brother F, Stray Fuego Studios, as always. Y'all know if y'all need anywhere to record a video, record songs, an album, an intro, a commercial, a podcast. Although I'm always insulted if another podcast records here. So Brother F, let's not make that happen. Um, but the studio is available at E for R 7-Eleven. Book your time. Just don't clash with my time, please. Uh, Brother Rosa, welcome again. Yo, thanks for Let's get into, um... Let's get into Jadakiss real quick. Pause. So Jim Jones told or said, pardon me. Jim Jones stated that Jadakiss made a big mistake not dropping a project immediately after the versus versus dip set. Yeah. To which Jada has now responded. Let me go to my source. <laughs> Jada? 
<laughs> yes. Yeah, Jada announced yesterday. It's funny because a lot of the things that we talked about on the previous episode, we got the answers right away. So, like he stated, you know, Jada Kiss answered by saying that he's going to drop two albums by the end of 23. Did he give any Ooh. names? No, nah, nah, he and just this is announced. all coming from the Jim Jones push a beef? No, no, from, no, no. no. It was Jim, a different statement that yeah, Jim Jones that said. That Jim Jones oh, said different that, statement. That, yeah. that, that Jada should have dropped like an album after the, the verses. Gotcha, that he gotcha. messed up by not striking while the, the iron while the iron was still hot. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Jim so, Jones been spicy lately. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. Yes, yeah. yes. So now all this stuff is coming to bite him in the ass again. So now Jada announced yesterday that he's dropping two albums by the end of twenty three. Um, did he give any names? Did I? No, I no, no, no titles yet. Did no. he give a, uh, any more specific time frames, or did he merely say? All he announced was he, that he was dropping two albums by the end of twenty three. Very cryptic, but you know, uh, that's I guess just, uh, that, I guess right. that's uh, just like immediate response. You know what I'm saying? You gotta say it's something. still late though, bro. Yeah, because how long? How many years ago was, was, was the verses? Yo, how bugged out is it that that verses took place in 2021? That's two years ago already, oh. right? Going that shit feels like it was, it was yesterday. yesterday. Where, yeah. Word. Oh, yeah. That's crazy, bro. Time is well, flying. But such a good one, too. Well, one thing Hell I'll yeah. give him is that he's been riding off that energy. So even if he didn't drop an album right away, he's still getting mad love. He's doing his coffee thing. He probably dropped a couple of singles. He's touring. So he, he, he did a couple tours, I think. You heard, yeah, Blood? He, um, he did the uh, tour with Cam and Mace, the three-headed monster. Yeah, yeah. And I think now he's on the Legends of the Streets tour. So, so you know, he doesn't necessarily have to drop an album. It probably would have been smart, but yeah. maybe he wanted to pace it out. Maybe he didn't want to rush the project. Are you looking forward to a new Jadakiss album? I'm always looking forward to, looking what? forward to a new Jadakiss album, no matter what. All right. Uh, uh, VS, are you looking forward to a new Jadakiss album? Hey, why not? You know what I'm saying? He's still one of the greats. Arozo? Yeah, for sure. Jada, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for him to drop something. Fair, He's too fair. good. He's too good. Yeah. Well, I know, I know you're not the greatest, uh, the biggest Jada fan, but uh, what did you think of his last album? The um, was it top one five that was alive? dedicated to his boy that died? Oh, that was what? Uh, damn, what was the name of that one? Uh, I don't recall, but shout out to the brother BK, the artist. He did the artwork. Yeah, he did the, the, the and, cover um, art. Yeah. It was that album was okay. I didn't think it was Ignatius. one of his better albums. Ignatius, yeah, Ignatius. Ignatius. Yeah, yeah. I was just looking. At I almost want to say the album before that one was the, better. Uh, top five that are alive, or the the one where it had his bust as the cover, right? Like if he was being inducted into the Hall of Fame or something like that. Well, yeah. If you don't include the one with him and Fabulous, yeah. Well, True. oh, actually, thank you, Blood, for reminding me. I would say that's his best album, period. The one with Fabulous. The one with Fab. The, that uh, is my favorite Jadakiss album. The uh, Friday. The what is it? Nightmare Night on Elm Street or. Friday, Friday the 13th, 13th on Elm Street, Street, Street like or something like that, yeah. But that's my favorite Jada project. Um, I don't, uh, for as much as I like Jada, I don't feel he drops excellent albums. albums. He drops good yeah. songs. Um, his you, albums are up do, and down. Too. Do you think Jada has a classic album in his uh, in his catalog? Honestly, I don't even know all of his albums. You're a little after the Jada time frame? Yeah. Right? Yeah, but I mean, Jaden Styles was always like my friends used to bump him, right? But I was right. never the type to really bump him. But I knew of Jada's skills. I, I fucked with and it. I respected. respected it. Yeah. yeah, like yeah, his voice is fire. Yeah, yeah. he's that, got a very that, distinct. I was voice. in a similar situation where I wasn't a big Jada Locks D Block fan, but mm. my friends Bloodshot um, and his brother specifically. Shout yeah. out to J. Shout out to Jeff X. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> Him and his Amen. brother specifically were very big D Block fans, so they always had that stuff on. So you'd hear it a lot. Yeah. Um, Jada's to be respected, bro. He's a legend. He just doesn't, in my opinion, have that legendary classic five mic beginning to end album. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's always gonna like haunt him. Yes. Perfect word. Haunt him. Yeah. Yes. But two projects this year, I won't believe it till I see it because artists True. always say they're dropping this, this, and that, and That's then it don't drop. I don't even know who he's signed to right now. If he's signed, he might be independent. Yeah. Um, two projects seems excessive. What if they're two short projects, like two, six, seven song EPs or whatever? Uh, I just feel like why see. is why is another nigga making you do that? 
When you Did he doing say it for yourself. when he said he's dropping two projects anything about Jim Jones? And no, his I don't know. Oh. So maybe it has nothing to do. He with He probably it. just oh. already had it in, you know, had it in the oh. works. But I agree with Jim Jones. I think he should have dropped something earlier. When honestly, the day after the verses, right. or that same weekend, verses for whatever um, negative it gets. I don't even know if it gets any negatives. I guess, but verses has been proven to to propel an artist after they appear on it. Oh, of their course. Their streams go yeah, up yeah, yeah. five, six hundred percent. Absolutely. <laughs> However, depending on their performance. For ah. example, I don't think Dipset streams went up after their You don't think verses. so? I'm if it sure did, it, it didn't compare to what Jadakiss streams were. True, went up. that's a fact. Because that's they didn't kill it like that. But yeah. So he should have dropped something, anything. Um yeah. three songs, six songs. Right. Well, you might get it now. But if you drop two <laughs> six song projects, why not drop one twelve song project? Because maybe it's not digest. Yo, you think about it. Twelve songs nowadays is might be too much, yo. People see that, and you're like, yeah. You know, I'll be honest, yo. I even find myself doing it sometimes. I'll be looking for new music, and I look at the album, and then I'll see how many songs it has, and then I'll see how many minutes it is. Yeah, yeah. The minutes is important. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if mm. I see something that's 15 songs, but it's 40 minutes, I'm like, all right, hit play. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But 15 songs, and you're talking about an hour and something, you're like, eh. Oh. That's a fact, but also too, like that. you could Think you could that. go on the album, you could play a song, no matter how many songs are on the album, mm. you could play a song not like the song and might not even test the other songs. True that. True. Or you could miss yeah. a great album because you you're prejudging it by the length. Yeah, I'm just you know saying, like saying? going based on like how music is today, like how. How but fast I'm, music and I'm how a fast magic music. I'm surprised by that because you're not of today. No, no, no. You're I know. I'm just saying. You're from the album era. But it, it, you know what? It goes back into the thing where like, yo, we, we're all moving at the same pace. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that. Mm, I don't agree with that. No, no. And on top of that, remember, like we talked about it, how a lot of our peers, uh, with us included, um, they'll stay listening to a certain type of music up to a certain type of date. Like you and I are the exception where we keep going and we'll keep looking for new music. So obviously new music is going to be of a shorter time. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So now that's what I'm accustomed to. So I look at it now. I'm like, all right, I could, I could fuck with this, especially if it's new. Older music doesn't get me like that. I'm like, yes, if it's an hour and a half and it's something old, I'll be like, all right, cool. I'm, I know what it is. Uh, know what I mean? You already so, know the music. Uh, right. I, 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 I just don't agree. Watching an old uh, movie. For one, I don't agree we're all moving at the same pace. Not at all. The world is moving at a pace, and each individual is choosing what pace to move in yeah. in said world. Yeah. That's why some people are movers and shakers, and some people are fucking standing still and not doing shit. Observers. So that's one point. And then two, um, we come from albums. We come from an hour, 10, 15. Double albums. Um, And I'm surprised to hear that your take has adapted to the times. What do you mean? Like you're Me saying, too. like how music is now. That's how you digest it. Well, because I, I, I'm, I'm talking like, about today's I, music. I, I, I don't think it's not even still, the music. I still digest it. It's not even how I digest it. Coming from the music, though, it comes from everything else going on in our lives, right? Everything you know, our attention spans have right. have right. gone through the like has adjusted. Know, is, yeah, it's like you it's different. Well, I, I just think it makes it harder to maintain your attention but good music i believe always will it will I, and you know what the funny thing is is that um i remember seeing this uh somebody on twitter posted it and they were like name five albums that you like post 2020 you know what i'm saying so now you really got to think of five albums that you like i don't post. think There's so. so much content i, I can give you five i know um, i gave five right off rip that i personally go back to and then a lot of them are closer to 2020 than they are now with the exception of shoddy i put shoddy up there yeah. You know what I'm um, saying? Yeah, I could give you five albums yeah. I like after 2020. Um, R&B alone, I could give you five albums I like from last year to this year. Mm. Well, but hip-hop is a question, though. That's Yeah, hip-hop the was the question. Hip-hop albums, that's the not difference. R&B. No, hip-hop. No. Um, that's that's yeah, what bro. I'm talking about. I, no, no, no. And I'm I just would saying. like to say I can, but right. my memory... You'd be burnt. I thought fucking the verses was two months ago, and it was two years ago. So right. to... to, to Oh, your time perception. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. I would have to That's really research yeah, yeah, yeah. that it was after 2020. True indeed. All right. But um, there's just mad content out there. You made a great but point, just, right, Amoroso, that that's what's different now. What's that? Is that the attention span 
is being fought for by so many sources. Right? When we were younger. Okay. Right? Um, we didn't have so much shit to, to, to keep us busy, really. Right? Mm-hmm. We had the TV. Exactly. You had outside. Right. You had music. And outside is what really kept us busy. And if you were into reading, you had books. Right. But you didn't have yeah. constant... And even with the influx music, influx of fucking data and information and content and, and YouTube and social media. It's and not that you didn't have it; it's that you didn't have constant influx of new information no, constantly. You didn't have it. it didn't yeah, exist. no, no, yeah, it didn't exist. That's what so. I'm then saying. an album there was only could a last couple longer. rappers. That too. There was, there was a, only a, a couple. Lot less music. Also, you for me, remember, now how many are there? Hip hop was also uh, still new in, in in the sense of if you think of genres at that point, like let's say 1990, right? 1990 hip hop was how old already? 20. Not even. No, 17. 17. If it was, years. If it was based as off the birth of it uh, being recorded as of 1973, it would have been 17. 17, right? 17 years as compared to yeah. rock and roll and even classical music and all that. Sh- those genres are old already in comparison to hip hop. So hip hop was new. That's why you had like two rappers. Like two really popular right, rappers, right? Right from you know East Coast, like from East was, Coast type shit. It was yeah. still in its like infant stages, almost basically, as compared to now. Hip hop is how old right now? And because there wasn't so many artists, there wasn't music being released so constantly, so an album could live six months to a year to two years. That was four, the other five thing. Singles. The now uh, an album right. might live two weeks. Shelf a great life. album. Yeah, shelf life <laughs> was different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, a shit album was, lives a day or well, two. The way yeah. even we heard the music because just you. Like copying a tape at a store and putting it in your car is way different than you having it on your phone. You know, you you take pride in having that tape and looking at the artwork and looking at the cover and looking at the information. And you not even it. um looking you know? blood. I would say more studying that shit. Like we yeah. used yeah, to everything, fucking everything. study and memorize yeah. um lyrics and production credits and even yeah. down so to like more. yeah the you sample more who played this. this. Now, you know. Yeah, man, it was a big difference between then and now. Um, let's go into a Rosa real quick. Your album, Broke But Not Poor, yeah. had like, I want to say like 18 joints? 20. 20 joints. As a new, as a, not a newer artist, as a younger artist, right? That is in tune with today's music and how it's released and how it's consumed. What made you put out a 20 song project? That, that's like, rare. I felt like it was important to me that all those songs that were compiled into that album, mm-hmm. they were just all important to me. They all meant something. Like they all had like a little message. And that was and your was first like project, part of the right? struggle. Yeah, it was my first debut album. That's called Broke But Not Poor. Check it out. It's on all DSPs, 20 tracks, a Rozo, dope joint. Um, so it was more like. A personal decision um, beating, I guess, like a business decision, like a business decision or a business plan. And also because the first album I really fell in love with yeah. was the Marshall Mathers LP. Yeah. Uh, that shit had 20 tracks. Okay. <laughs> another right. another person that's. That's a classic big. album, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out I'm to not going to say out. that's exactly why I selected yeah, 20 tracks yeah, yeah, to be but, yeah. on a, my first album. But, uh, right. but, but that but it had subconsciously, yeah, yeah. that shit is probably in there. All right. That plays a very important part. Um, how long did you work on that album? Man. <clears throat> it's funny because I've had these songs for so long that I never even released them. Uh, you feel me? Um, some dating back to like twelve years ago. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like the first one of the first, um, one of the first beats I ever made was on the road. It was the last track on the album. It was the outro, and I made that song twelve years ago, bro. That was the first beat I ever made. You made the song or you made the beat? I made the beat. Years. I wrote the song, and then you and, know, and recorded it. And and I. That's the thing with certain songs. I recorded them uh-huh. back in the day, uh-huh. but I redid them yeah. for the album. Yes, for the okay. album. And then like some I didn't get to even lay down, but I ended up laying down for the album. For the album. Nice. Okay, you said you made the beat. 
So I asked you this question yesterday and you didn't answer me. It was after the show when it was off air. But you're the you make the beats or you make beats, you produce. You do the engineering mm-hmm. for BCMG. Well, not all of it. Some. Some of so it. So you're skilled enough to do it. Yes. Um you're an artist. For sure. You're a CEO. You're Gotta a founder. Be. What other hats do you wear? You you re- do videos? Do you shoot the videos? I mean, I've shot Bobby Bonds videos. And edited? Edited. Yeah. Damn. Mambo, um, you guys got to check it out. Mambo. I seen the video. You Mambo. edited that? You yeah. do the you shot, uh, shot that shot that on the iPhone 11. <laughs> you do the promo? I mean, like I, uh, marketing? I'm I'm good at it. I, not that I take on that role for everyone. Right. But I'm good at it and you definitely like, do I do it for, it for yourself, myself. Right. Yeah. Right. And what about um <clears throat> Shout out shout out to the iPhone and yeah, all the iPhone, iPhone videos out there. Yeah. What about like well yeah, you do artist development because I've seen you do it. Yeah. So that's like ten hats yeah. off the rip. It's a lot of pressure, bro. You remind you remind me of me. Really? Where is born? Of a young me. <laughs> that's crazy, bro. I don't even I don't even <laughs> like I don't guy. even look at it like that though. You don't I just realize do what I got to do, bro. Yeah. yeah, I don't even realize it. You're you're bringing it to my attention right now. Yeah, but that's part of the fun though, I think. Um y- you you've learned every aspect of what the music business is, you know. Maybe except like and I don't know, you you tell me if I'm wrong. Um maybe except like contract negotiations or breakdown of contracts and maybe yeah. um prepping what it is that you want versus what it is that they're offering. I don't know if you've been in those situations yet. That's um, something that I've been getting into, like that I've been having sure, to deal I'm with. I'm sure you will. So that's another hat. So first of all, congratulations, because that shit ain't easy, bro. Yeah. Um BCMG has seven artists, including yourself. And to be responsible for seven careers and their trajectory and seven lives in a sense, you know what I'm saying? Cause you have to protect your artists. You have to educate them. Um, you've got to help them plan and, and be their therapist when they need it. You know what I'm saying? Um, all that shit ain't easy, bro. So a big congratulations to you for taking on that responsibility for learning these things. And, for not allowing the pressure of it all to even be like visible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You carry yourself well. Um, you've been here for your artists. Um, I see how you interact with them and I see how you guide them and, li- and, and the respect that they have for you and, and how they listen. Yeah. So that's all um, mad commendable, bro. Like I look forward to seeing what BCMG has coming up and we're going to get into the whole BCMG thing shortly. I just want to give a Rozo his uh his flowers real quick um, <laughs> thank you man i appreciate you i really look forward to seeing y'all develop and continue to grow and continue to expand and uh add artists and you know release more music and put out more content and and, and i hope y'all are documenting everything you know yeah um because in 10 years it could be the bcmg Do- documentary, documentary you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying and show f- where y'all started to where y'all are at and where y'all will be in another few years. So definitely shout out to you, man. Big props to you. Keep doing your thing. Shout out to BCMG. Shout out to all the artists. Let's, let's list them real quick. We got a Rozo himself. Make sure y'all go check out broke, but not poor the compilation. Check out all the singles, follow him on IG at a R O Z O underscore. He also got the homie Dilly dollars, the brother script, shout out to script, yeah. shout out to the chef, shout out to Dilly Dollars, of course. Poppy Pong, shout out to Poppy Pong. FYB Tanner. Is Tanner or Tanier? Tanner. FYB Tanner. AKA balance. Shout out to him. He must have not had balance the day he was scheduled to be here. But nah, he really, we'll, he truly we'll wasn't feeling good that. that day. Shout out to Lavish Poppy, who I haven't met, and shout out to 201 Ja, who I haven't met. Word. Um, I look forward to meeting all y'all and watching y'all continue to rise and succeed, man. Word. Um, let's go back into current events real quick before mm-hmm. we get uh, more into a Rosa in his career. Um, you told me, VS, that Pusha T had some type of clapback at Coachella to yeah. Jim Jones' recent statements. Can you yeah, give me more information? Yeah, so um, we were talking yesterday about how uh, Jim Jones said that Pusha T doesn't belong in the top 50 because uh, who was it? Complex and somebody else ranked him in the top 50 greatest MCs. Somebody, I'm not sure who it was that listed it, but he was... Right. Ranked amongst. So yesterday at his set at Coachella, 
he effectively changed it to Coke cello. And they allowed him to do it. They changed the, the stage and everything. And you see that, like I saw it on Twitter. Yo, the crowd went crazy. Like basically showing him, what are you talking about? This is my impact. You know what I'm saying? And he came out to, it was a song off his last album. Uh, it's Almost Dry. I'm trying to think of the name of the song. But it was also a Pharrell joint. And yo, the crowd went crazy. Damn. Absolutely ape shit. That's yo. that. That he came that's out in all white shit. and shit, basically looking like he he's done similar things. That's yeah. legendary shit. Yeah, and yeah. and honestly, basically to respond, and he got it on vi- on video. You know what I'm saying? Like that was what what was dope to me that it was on video, and it was perfect timing for what was going on at the moment. So he showed his impact right there. Is that impact though? Because if you go to Coachella, you bought the tickets to Coachella, you're obvi- obviously a fan. Right. So it's like, yeah, y'all going to clap. But he's not the only here. artist at Coachella, is my thing. True. And he's a headliner. He's a headliner. So okay, but still, that, that right there alone. Went, uh, I'm sure people went to see him because that's they're my fans. Point, the him. fact that you're selling out an, uh, uh, an event like Coachella and there's mad people that, yo, this. Coachella. This, Coke Chella. On top of that, you know what I'm saying? So I think I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I just Jim Jones could have a retort to that. But but before we move on, blood. Let me get your input on Jim Jones' comments that Pusha T does not belong in the top fifty MCs of all times list. Before, Do you agree with Jones or before you give uh, your answer, then, blood? He was also he was ranked number thirty nine. Push. Yes. What was Jones okay. ranked? He wasn't interesting at all. No, not in the top fifty. <laughs> Interesting. Go go ahead, Blood. I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to cut you off, brother. Maybe that was his thought because of the fact that he was looked over. Maybe that that that's why he even brought it up. Possibly. But uh, it's crazy that he would single out Pusha T of all the rappers on that list, possibly. All right. Interesting you say that. Let me give you right. a theory that's been thrown around. Go ahead. Drake uh-huh. recently had a show at the Apollo in Harlem, right, uh-huh. on 125th, uh-huh. where he brought out Dipset. He had Jeff Hamilton make dips at OVO Leathers. Yeah. So obviously there's some type of relationship there. Dips oh, at I get it. Jim dips Jones at Jim and Drake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we've been said that. He just recently said that Drake is the GOAT and uh, Drake had uh, Cam's pink. Uh, pink uh, so you think, it, is he like tr- like kissing up to Drake? It could be. It could yeah. be. I, I've been said that he was probably looking to get a collab from Drake somehow. He's probably trying to align himself with Drake, yeah. He's going to sign with him or something. You don't know. Does that make it worse? Because to me, that makes it worse. If that's the case, like, that's that's kind of whack, bro. That's kind of some bitch ass shit, right? Basically, what he's doing, he's he's sending shots. Questionably corny. He's sending shots for his new mans. Yeah. That's not his mans 20 down, you know? That's his new homie. He just happens to be the biggest artist on the planet. <laughs> Jim Jones, I, I've never seen him as a person that was. Uh, let me let me let me pick my words carefully. Yeah, yeah, because he's as aligned dangerous. with anybody as aligned with <laughs> anybody besides it being a business situation. You, you know what I'm saying? Because even his uh, friendship to Cameron was put into question when he sided with Fifty. You know, and and I could keep going. So you think he's a user? It could be, you know, for his whatever's in his best interest. Mm. Whatever fits his interest, yeah. Like, although you know the situation with Cameron was a little iffy because you know Cameron was kind of like holding him back from being great. So you know, you never know what what was behind all that. But really quickly, I just on the push it shit. I want to say this: King Push gets a lot of love from the youth now so he his artistry has transcended Time. from the 90s yeah. into the 2000s into the 2010s into the 2020s yes that doesn't necessarily make him one of the greatest 50 rappers right so i'm not going to say that jim jones is not right or wrong you know what i mean so you would agree with Jim Jones that he's not a top fifty rapper? I'm not positive. I'm I'm trying to see because I put a fifty list not too long ago up. Well, actually, it's been a while now, and I'm trying to see if I had Pusha T in there because there's a lot of fucking other dope rappers 
all time. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Not necessarily saying that Jim Jones is up there neither. Right. Although I feel like Jim Jones has a classic album and Pusha T does it. I would disagree with you there. I Capo's the classic Capo. album? Dude. Hold on, hold on. Capo's the classic album? Yeah, El, El Capo and then El Capo Deluxe, I think, just right. solidified it. Yeah, he does. What I, I my disagreement wasn't that he does that Jim don't Jim Jones doesn't have a classic album, but my disagreement is that uh, uh, this guy has uh, Pusha D does have a classic album. He has actually yeah. two of them, in my opinion. Yeah, but you know, commercially, well, again, not to me. You know, I don't feel like Pusha T has a classic album. I one of his dopest ones was Santeria, but that doesn't mean you mean uh, Daytona. Yeah, they told him, excuse yeah, me, yeah. that I got the Trump video on, on it. Yeah. All right. But, uh, you know, I digress. What do you think, uh, Rozo? I think, I think, I think Jim Jones was a little over the top with it. I think Pusha T could definitely be in the top 50. Pusha T sells out shows, man. Right, he sells out shows, and he got and good I think, music. Yeah, he's got he's got crazy bars, and I think you know what you, we were talking about the other day when you went that Drake this, uh huh, right. It's just that's, harsh, bro. Yeah, that that's it's skillful. That's what I mean. That 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 shows his skill. That that's the thing about him. Like I think, for instance, that song shows his skill. The thing at Coachella that shows his impact. Like he's able to give you different glimpses of different things he's able to do. You know what I'm saying? And like Blood said also, he's been able to transcend time. You know what I'm saying? Like he he was one of those artists that came from the nineties, was hot in the nineties, was able to transition to the two thousands, was hot in the two thousands, was hot in the twenty tens, and is still now hot to these kids. Even though he's considered an old man at this point. But he's still hot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, this goes back to the. I gotta look at the list <laughs> to though. The convo. I gotta look at the list of clout chasing. I don't even know. Yeah, I'd like to see the list as well. I, I don't, don't think a one man made list is ever valid. Right. You know yeah. True. True. So if we wanted to make a fifty greatest rapper rappers list, in right. my opinion, we'd each have to write our fifty greatest rappers and, and tally it up. Tally right? it up and yeah. see who is, right. has accumulation of the most points i guess right. and that and that gonna... would only give an average of us right there might be a group a million people who don't agree at all exactly mm -hmm. that was what i was just gonna say too we're all gonna have 50 different artists we're exactly. not all gonna have the, we're obviously gonna have you know the some will repeat the, yeah 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 and, that, and that's what but sets them apart you're gonna have some artists that i'm not even gonna think of yeah. and i'm gonna have people that you're not you know so it's gonna be different you know yeah, I'm a, well you, was I, this that billboard list Billboard, yes, uh, it was Billboard. Maybe it was Billboard. Yeah, I think it was Billboard and Complex. Both and then compiled that's the another thing. Okay. Billboard is not a, a relevant a viable, source yeah. of hip hop information. Neither is Complex. Neither is Complex. Yeah, complex sucks. But then again, neither is the source now. And XXL yeah. don't exist. So who is our valid source of hip hop? That's a good question. Data and information is it Joe Budden? Is it Nori? Is yeah. it academics? And they're all gonna have varying good. opinions. Yeah, because they all have their own likes and dislikes. Is it the Godcast? Definitely the Godcast. <laughs> My uh, takes yeah. are pretty much always 100 percent true. Yeah, man. But shouts to Pusha T, man, for clapping back at uh. Don't laugh. So don't have hang up on him, bro. <laughs> go, back, go back to building or whatever. Nah. Um. Shout out to Pusha T. Oh, shout out to yeah. Jim Jones. Jim is fairly local. I'd love for him to come up and give his opinions, Word. and uh, maybe retort some of the claims that. I I I don't think he had. I, I would love to know why he called out Pusher specifically. Yeah. That's a good question. Because I'm sure there were other people that were on that list that could be considered questionable. Right? Well, I did read something, and it made a lot of sense that he was judging Pusher through a Harlem lens. Like, he judges everything else through a Harlem lens. So, I saw... Because uh, he was uh, saying that nobody wanted to dress like Pusher, or nobody also, wants... I saw an interview with Cam yesterday that he said Jim Jones from the Bronx. I did see that. Yeah, Jim Jones... I saw yeah, that, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. But, but, but Cameron's another nigga that's being spicy. That's like <laughs> born in the Bronx and moved to Harlem when he was five or ten yeah, years old. Yeah, yeah. Nigga, you from Harlem. <laughs> yeah, but if you want to be spicy, you from the Bronx. Yeah, what up? That's like Exhibit just called out for being from got called out for being from Albuquerque 
and Corrupt got called out from being from like Philly. He's from you Philly, word. Yeah, but everybody always knew Corrupt was from yeah, Philly. That's everybody not a call. What's wrong with Philly? Well, you know he's <laughs> well, he's re the, the West Coast. Coast. Yeah. Oh, he but he, I, I feel like he always acknowledged yeah, yeah, yeah. that he was. I from think Philly. so. I think so too. Yeah, but you know, you that that means you can't call out Jim Jones for his Harlemness. Oh, you know I'm not saying? calling nobody out. I'm just saying I saw no, a video I'm yesterday that Cam. You know, and Cam, like you said, Cam is definitely spicy, especially you, you see, with Jim Jones. You see when they were talking about, in the same video, when they were talking about the uh, the Jim Jones shirts that he had made? Yeah. That Yo, was that was up. fucked up. <laughs> that was, uh, Cameron had made some shirts uh, calling Jim Jones Tricky Ricky. Yeah. had people wearing them in the studio, and yeah. supposedly that was the initial... Downfall Start of the beef, yeah. Of the dip set. And that's why they and don't ride together no he, more. He, had, he wished he hadn't done it. Yeah, he would call him Tricky Ricky because he would trick on his lady, but he wouldn't help out his homies in jail and shit. Oh, shit. And it was Allegedly. Like, allegedly. allegedly. <laughs> so, guys, look, I'm I'm going back to my list of 50 greatest rapper from 2019 uh-huh. and Push Ain't On It. You sat down and... Created a list of the t- of your top fifty rappers of all time. Yeah, yeah. How, how long did it take you? It took me maybe about a day. What research went into this? Uh, and by just, research, I mean how did you not forget somebody? Yeah. I, no, I, I could have definitely forgot somebody. Absolutely, I could have forgot somebody. But just from my memory, you know, looking at other lists that came out at the time, um, I think this was made after that. That list that got made that Joe Budden was like top number three. Ten or something. Oh, it was number yeah, three, yeah, yeah, and that yeah, list yeah. was valid yeah. as fuck. What? I don't care what. Yeah, I mean. but nah, that list was not valid. You know why? Because you know whose list that was? Who? DJ Academics. Yeah. Fuck that guy. Yeah, Academics. That yeah, list was valid. Too. Who was number one? It was like Hove, Nas, Joe Budden. Yeah, I yeah. totally agree with that. Yeah, something like that. Like, it was trash. <laughs> I agree. Fuck that. Where's Joe Budden on your top fifty? He's definitely not. Ah, invalid In list. Top- in you bed. know who made my top 50, though, know, that you'd be souped about? Who? Troy Ave? Drake. Drake? Yeah. Drake? <laughs> you sound like Soldier Boy right now, yo. Yeah. All right, Drake. just tell me who's number one on your list. Biggie. You know who it is? Come on. Nah, nice. Biggie, I told you. Nice, Biggie. nice. It's Biggie. Really? Biggie? It's Biggie. Definitely B.I.G. I told you. Who is Biggie, bro? Let's yeah. put a Rosa under pressure. Give me your top three rappers of all time. Top three rappers of all time? Ooh. The Rosa list. Real quick, real quick. Damn, that's tough. Uh, let's go, let's go. All right, shit. Easy E. <laughs> Easy E? Yeah. Nice. Oh, holy shit. I'm shocked. The niggas, me too. the man. Okay. What? Uh, fuck. Jay-Z. Thank you. Drake. Drake, okay. Ooh. Eminem's a beast, too. Yo, Easy E, you just blew my socks off, bro. Bro, Easy E is like the f- most entertaining rapper, nigga. He's like the funniest. He's got the he's got a great voice. He was, he was. He, he was. tells the story in his in his lyrics. Yeah. It's 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 fucking hilarious. Not necessarily his lyrics, but yes, the he, way he tells yes. it is his way. His inflections. And shit. Wow, I'm actually surprised. Yeah. How um, and uh, shit. If you have to edit this out, blood, edit it out. But how old are you? I'm okay. So you went back and studied Easy E, or yeah. di- or did you have like a big brother or uncle or nah, something to put you? Just on? like nah. you weren't around for the Easy E. Yeah, I wasn't were. around for it. But like when I got into like rap music, I used to I used you, to you download a lot of music on fucking LimeWire uh, and like resource. Napster yeah. and shit. Yeah. So I used to just you know I came across that. No shit. And I used to search a lot of lyrics, bro. Yeah. I used to search a lot of lyrics. Are you into reading? And, and like words? What made you search lyrics? Yeah. Just I, to I really guess I understand. loved reciting them. Mm. And you wanted to see what that you you wanted to see what they actually said. But it wasn't with hip hop first. It was, was it? it was with like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dead ass. I got into that I because of my third grade teacher. I can't say nothing negative because I was super into New Kids on the Block. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. What? Hey, yo. Yeah, I was a fan of New Kids was on the Block. Was that a band? Yeah, that was like the original Backstreet Boys. <laughs> right, exactly. In they the, were a boy band the from the early, uh, the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. Yes. So I so I can't knock. See, I don't know. But I only, but it's because of my influence. Hold like on, I was hold influenced. On, Rosa, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Wait, what did this guy say? What did he say? Yo, blood, don't front like you wasn't down with New Kids on the Block. You stupid. Nah, I got a funny ass story about New Kids on the Block, yo. 
About oh, didn't I you mean, have the bed what? sheets of new kids on the block? <laughs> what? Let me finish. Let me finish. Nah, he had the bed sheets. I used to hate new kids on the block, right? I used to fucking cannot stand them, right? So then one day my mom comes home and she went shopping at like this, like, you know, like this, like not 99 cent store, but at the time there was like the like the five and dimes and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the hood. Yeah. Yo, she comes back home with bed sheets with new kids on the block all over the exactly. shit. Exactly. See? And and not only that, she bought a fucking water bottle for like when I would go play baseball and shit, like Little League, <laughs> with new kids on the block on that shit. I'm like, ma! Uh, uh, see? So you can't boy. front on NKOTB? Yo, ma! NKOTB. Yo, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> all right, man. Shout, Shout out, out to new kids on the block. Over the water bottle, nigga. Yeah, yeah, I bet. I bet you had it covered. I don't uh -huh. know he was out yeah. there singing Bugs, the song. <laughs> he was out there doing nah, the dance and everything. Ass, I got my little daughter, the the smallest one, the two, the three year old. Yeah, she be. Uh, we listen to the one track, the the right stuff. Yeah. Uh, oh oh oh! Yo, she loved that shit. Yo, we be. I'll be cracking up. See, on shout that. out to her. She got oh, good taste. Yeah. In Back to a Rosso. So you would write down Backstreet Boys and then sync. No, I wouldn't write them down. Lyrics, I would, I would, would search them. them. I would search them. Like I used to, like you know, I used to love the albums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because my, my, uh, my third grade teacher, bro, she's the one who really got me into music. Uh, she fly. So she was the influence. Yeah, because like she, she, our, our class was so fun, bro. Yeah. You know, and she used to play, play that shit all the time. That's what's up. The Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and like hot, hot, uh, 98 Degrees or some shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, Like my, she was a big fan. My yeah. wife you feel me? 98 Degrees. So that, that got me into, you know, those songs or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I went and bought, um, my the dad CD? took me, yeah, to go yeah. buy the, the Millennium album. Oh, okay, Backstreet I remember Boys. that. I think that was the first that album was a I ever big bought. Release. I remember yeah. that shit because yeah. they... Played it, they played it a lot on TRL, and yeah, it was yeah, a yeah. big fucking deal. Backstreet Boys were on top of the world, bro. Yeah, they were, yo. Yeah, they, they were, were the hottest shit, shit for a yeah, minute, and then Sync was the hottest yep. shit. I think yeah, they sold a million, a million albums in a week when they dropped. Yeah, um, like in a day. Whatever album yeah. it was. The one that they were like uh, puppets? With the yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was the album I bought next. Yeah, they, that, <laughs> they sold a million in a week with that album. Uh, That's crazy. Yeah. Yo, so I used to... Love those songs. Yeah, yeah. So I used to look up the lyrics. Yeah. And then I, you know, I used to just recite them. And then, bro, this is how I know. Like, I was meant to to. I love music, yeah. but I didn't realize how much I love music. Like, I wasn't doing anything musically besides, you know, just reciting lyrics. Yeah. You know, but you said that was third grade. Yeah, it was third grade. What the fuck are you gonna be doing? Shit, I wish I started though, like back then when I was ten years old. Yeah, they could write right in my own shit. I don't think unless you have someone around you that you see doing it, I don't even think the idea of doing it comes so quickly. You feel me? Like it, after a while, you'd be like, "Wait, I could do this shit too." Yeah, exactly. But at first, listen, you you're a fan, yeah. so you fall in love. And what you were doing was actually studying, you know, their song structure, yeah. song structure. Um. Uh, lyrics, uh, bar patterns. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, bro, that's actually like you did that shit without even Realizing. being aware of that you were beginning the process of studying music. Yeah, word. So when did you get into hip hop? So then, then my cousin, he he pretty much put me onto hip hop. Like he put me onto Jay Kanye. Okay. Like back in the day, um, like around Blueprint time. <laughs> yeah, like around yeah, those times. Like but I didn't really remember. Jay Z didn't really stick out to me, you know, at first, because yeah. I didn't really understand what the hell he was saying. Right. I was mad young, like I was kind of new to hip hop. Like my yeah. cousins used to watch the music videos on yeah. BET and MTV. Wow. So you know, I used to be around for that, mm -hmm. and then that's what really got me into the transition into hip hop. And <clears throat> so I started searching the lyrics for those. Right. You feel me? Right. And then I started downloading music. Like, that was a prime era where everybody was just stealing music. LimeWire, Lime Lime Napster, Wire, all, Napster. That all that shit. So I used to wow. download, you know, all the songs, all of them. Mm -hmm. And then I fell in love with Lil Wayne. Okay. Lil Wayne, I fell in love with that, like, 16. He was the best. I know you don't like him that much. No, no, it's not <laughs> that I don't like him. Um, it's just that I think he's overrated. He's I don't one of think the best, he's the bro. Best rapper he's alive. one of the best. Yeah. 
He didn't make my top fifty list either. What you're bugging? What? You're bugging. <laughs> I'm a little surprised because you've defended right, um, Little Wayne before. Little Wayne, bro, is is you know uh, maybe he had ghostwriters in in that era where like he was wilding out. Maybe you know maybe. I think, but you know, you think, know, it was very different from when he was on Hot Boys. Like, correct, I'll admit Absolutely that. Correct. I think Gilly wrote for him for sure. Whatever. Really quickly, really quickly. So. Now that you say that, BS, did you guys hear about Cassidy saying that Little Wayne changed up his style after he heard Cassidy? No, but I feel like Cassidy be bugging sometimes. But I he do think bugging, if it, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I okay. don't hear I don't hear he Little Wayne in Ca- the- Cassidy. I don't hear Cassidy and Lil Wayne. No, but I do hear okay. Gilly and Lil Wayne. Yes. So, yes. so let me let me finish. Go ahead. Gilly and Cassidy are from the same cut from the same cloth. They're both from Philly. Yeah. They both had different rhyme structures. They do. You though, know, yeah. um, when they when they first came out. And uh and I'm talking about like besides all the Cassidy like battle shit, Cassidy had a yo, Cassidy battled freeway and murked them. You know what I'm saying? So uh Little Wayne started building up a different rhyme structure after I believe it was um was it 500 degrees? Yeah, it was for the Carter yeah, One. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, for the Carter One, exactly. But that's, that's when, when Gilly like, was, was around. Gilly. Exactly. That's when he was signed to uh, Cash Money. <laughs> so, so even if he didn't write for him, that Cassidy could have influenced him in a way. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's not it's not out of the realm of possibilities. It, let's say, for example, Cassidy influenced Gilly, and then Gilly influenced Little Wayne. There's a connection there for sure. Yeah, there's six degrees of separation. But I would always feel Little Wayne sounded like Gilly. Big facts. Um, so even if Gilly didn't write for him, he definitely influenced, influenced him, him or yeah. uh, or molded him to change his rhyme. Pattern. Just like Jigga was influenced by what's these two dudes' name? Uh, the two the Young Gunners. On, yeah, on yes. rock, on the rock. Yeah, more so yeah. young Chris, but yeah, right. But he was influenced. Yeah. He started sounding a little like them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Philly, what I'm saying? Philly really influenced a lot of the hip hop game. Yeah, man. Philly doesn't get a lot of the credit it deserves for their influence on hip hop. Shout out to Cool C, bro. Oh, One of my yeah. favorite early hip hop songs was a song called uh, "Glamorous Life" by a brother named Cool C from Philly, who ended up going to jail for life for robbing a bank. Yeah. Shout out to him. <laughs> Damn. Damn, for life though. For life. Because I think he hit somebody. Got killed, yeah. Oh. Uh. Um. All right. So you download the music. You get into Little Wayne. It's got to be inspirational. How old are you around this time? I'm like 16. When did you start to realize that music was an option that you could create it yourself? <laughs> this is. Real shit. It was once I heard Drake. Really? Yeah. Wow. Early and, Drake? But how did I know about Drake? Mm-hmm. Through Lil Wayne. Mm. I used to have every yeah. Lil Wayne song, bro. Right. So I heard Drake on Brand New Remix. Okay. I don't know if you guys know that song. I, I don't know that one in particular. Drake's singing. Before um, So Far Gone. So Far Gone? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. It was like the, I don't know. It was like but the Drake first. Drake a great singer. Bro, Drake was singing and I was like, damn, who's this? <laughs> I was like, yo, this shit nah, but really, sounds so tough. He's the one. You're, uh, Burns is actually the one that put me on to Drake. He put me on to So Far Gone. I remember we were at your, at the old lab. Well, yeah, at yeah, the yeah. second lab. Well, shout out to my mom. Yeah. Because my mom put me on to Degrassi. Really? And the only reason I knew you was Drake. was watching that shit? Hell yeah. Like a motherfucker. Yeah, we're, for real? I never every saw Sunday, it. I never me saw and it. Dukes, it was on Channel 11 for some reason. That's crazy. And every Sunday we would watch Degrassi. Like, my mom put me on. So then when I seen Drake. I was like, oh, shit, that's homie from Degrassi. Right. I want to hear what he's doing. Okay. And then I heard it. I was like, right, okay. Oh, yeah, this, no this way. But he was singing on So Far Gone. Yeah, but he's not a great singer. No, he's not. But he he's melodically great. Vocally, not Yes, great. he knows how to ride beats, pause, yeah. like with melodies and shit. But once I heard off uh, So Far Gone, I was like, yeah, this guy's out of here. Yeah. Like, this guy's yeah. going to be. I remember when he put me no on to it. I, I remember... Listening to it, and I was like, "Yeah, this is gonna be the wave and yeah. shit that and everybody's then gonna that, be on." That that project shit. ended up changing how music sounded, yeah, probably facts. for the following. I knew, I knew 10 about years. Drake from uh, Comeback Season, which was I think his like it, first. It was yeah, that, that was, was that was actually yeah. before So Far Gone. Word, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I knew that he was gonna blow up because he had the track with uh, with Drake songs. songs. Yep, it was fucking crazy. Yep. So you hear Drake, 
I hear Drake on brand like, new remix. And you're and like, I was like, wait a minute, I could do that shit. Nah, not yet, not yet, <laughs> no, not yet. nah, not yet. I was like, damn, okay. hold up, this is fire. Yeah, who's this? Mm -hmm. And then I found out it was Drake. Didn't know who the fuck Drake was. He was nobody he did. was a nobody, yeah. not a nobody, but musically he was yeah. a nobody still. Well, I'm telling you, this is one of the first songs that like changed. Everything. Like nobody knew about this song. Yeah. yeah, you feel me? Like nobody knew about this song. I was on Little Wayne's ass. Yeah, you feel me with whatever he was dropping. Wayne fans are like that. Yo, so found that. Uh -huh. Then I started, you know, looking for Drake music. Mm -hmm. Started finding that, and then I was like, "Damn, yo, hold up, this guy, this guy I could rap like this, mm -hmm. and he could sing." And and I felt like he was taking the words right out of my mouth, though. No homo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, no, no. And um, I was like, you know, and then I finally saw him, like in a picture or whatever, a video, or something. I was like, "Hold up, that's that's, that's Drake." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh wow! I could definitely no, no do disrespect this. to yeah. Drake, bro. No, I love his you, my his brother. his uh, his appearance like has evolved. Nigga. You know what I'm saying? I, I was, was like, yo, if he could do it, first. I could do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. real shit. But and that's if, when I started. If you think about it, right? Like he just said, he was kind of goofy looking, and he dressed kind of funny. But you he know? was Canadian, also. That, but that, would, that, that's a detriment. Do you think he would have been able to do that without Kanye West? Because Kanye West was the one talking about, yo, just be yourself, man. Dress the way you want to dress and shit. Like, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, where you didn't have to be hardcore and you didn't have to have. Oh, like, the, you mean because Kanye had already come out? And yeah, been, so. yeah, yeah. Like, and um, was, you know, doing the blazers and shit. He necessarily wasn't dressing how hip hop was expecting you to dress as a rapper. You know what I'm saying? So I think... I don't want to give all the credit to Kanye. I think music and society was evolving at the same time and becoming more woke in the love yourself way. And you don't... Hip-hop was, was no longer gimmicky. Or stereotypical. And, and you didn't need to have a certain facade to put out yeah. music. You didn't have to be the stereotypical I, I, Kanye, rapper. Kanye led the charge, but I believe Drake was bound to blow... Regardless. Plus, nah, yeah, I don't, I don't give any. The, the fact he was from Canada, I feel helped him a lot because the music that comes from up there is not influenced by the music down here. I don't think they, they mm. are on a different wave, and because they got a lot of, a lot of dance hall and a lot of different type of sounds that come from up there, and uh, you know he didn't have to conform to what the rappers down here conform to, you know. He, he didn't have to, but he did in a sense because his so far I gone had heavy like Houston influence, like facts. screw influence and shit. Big facts. Yeah, because you know he was already signed to to Wayne though. True, and remember, um, he spent time down south. He did. He wasn't. He was Canadian, but when he would go um see his dad, he was like, was it in yeah, New south, Orleans? South, south, oh, or Memphis. Or oh, in Memphis. Memphis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had the heavy like. Memphis influence. Southern wow. Southern yeah. influence. All yeah. right, pause this conversation. You proposed a conversation before the episode started. You want to revisit that question uh, for our guest and our co-host? About Wu and 3-6? Uh, yes. All right, yeah. Well, that was going to be uh, 10 shots, but that's cool. We could... I'll change it. Well, I want it to be a deeper conversation. <clears throat> All right, so um, I saw this article, and uh, they proposed a question, which was tough because if you really think about it, in your opinion, who's more influential? In music, is it Wu Tang or Thirty or, or Three Six Mafia? I mean, really? I'm asking. Wu Tang. You think Wu Tang? I'd say so. No They're more influential, in your opinion, in of music to, to 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 this day. Absolutely. <coughs> All right. You, so let's yes. take it to Blood. I, I, blood. You agree with Arosa? Hands down. See, because I disagree. I, yeah, I think so too. Why? I think Three Six is the more influential, influential group musically, musically because people today still sounding like Three Six. Ain't nobody putting out no Wu Tang sounding records. Exactly. Or if they are, they're not succeeding in the sense that Three Six. They're not mainstream. In, in the way that Three Six, the right. Three Six sound has become the sound. Yeah, like the popular sound of today. All right, so the main, then, at least the mainstream so? sound. So then, you yeah, know what? absolutely. What, what exactly? Then I what if, exactly is that sound? Listen to it, for fam, example. The, as the, far as what, influential, uh -huh. then maybe I was thinking more monumental. No, monumental. No, Wu that I get it. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. As that, far as you, you know, like you said, these guys having more influence on other artists, and yeah. you know, with the flows and the type of right. you know rhythms and the stuff. Beats, yeah, um, right. the, the production, the 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 vo the the voices, the way they like um, 
make them like Debonic or whatever. Right. The the Migos flow uh yeah, blood. That's what I was thinking. Um I don't know if you're if you're aware, but that actually derived from Three Six Mafia from Lord Infamous. Big facts. Yeah, but I, I don't think it's necessarily Three Six Mafia. Yeah, that man. Influenced Even listen to the beats, artists, dude. Listen to the beats. Sure. The beats are heavy eight oh eight. You know what I'm saying? They're they're a but lot everybody slow. Everybody from Texas and from the South had heavy 808. Nah, but it sounds a lot similar to what's going on today, dude. Like, it sounds very similar to what's going on today, fam. I, I don't think that necessarily makes them more influential, though. You know, And that's I'm fair. You don't, no, no, you yeah, don't yeah, have yeah. to agree. Yeah, that's yeah. why we proposed the question. Yeah, you yeah. feel me? Yeah, yeah. well, that's, why, that's mm-hmm. why I'm, I'm retorting right now. I don't think it necessarily makes them more influential. Uh, because I think Wu Tang, with what they did with just their contract structure, influenced the entire game. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, but the question was musically. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm saying we're only talking music, music. not uh. Okay, okay. You know, because as far as cultural impact, I would say Wu Tang. Nah, yeah, yeah. There's no question. One. There's no question. Um, question. Even like you said, blood business wise. Yeah. Uh. Well. Yeah. Contract wise, yeah, Wu Tang, but. But also, three six did good business. Remember, they 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 had their own show. They had the Oscar. Yeah, so no, yeah, it's yeah, not that they've done bad business. business. But yeah. as far as contractually, yeah, Wu Tang set a right. precedent that was never before seen or heard. But it's s- funny because speaking strictly I was musically, watching, I was just watching the Wu Tang show uh, earlier this morning, mm. and I got to the I'm in like the final season. I got to the episode where uh, Ray drops the the purple tape. That that's and the that's best. Alone, that's the best show, right? That's the best episode, dude, right there. You think so? It, it, I I don't like when they go to like the separate movie, like the separate album. It goes into like a different movie type episode. But just the point is that when he dropped that purple tape, man, that should change the game. Was Liquid Swords a red tape? No, no. Okay, I, I've seen that on Twitter recently. That Liquid nah, Swords nah, was nah. red, and I was like, damn. But if that was a red tape. Why didn't what, they call like, it the red tape? Yeah, yeah. Why no, didn't no, no. Have that it mind? wasn't. It wasn't. All right. Um. So we went. Uh. I guess three to one. Uh. Three six to. Yeah. Uh. To your Wu Tang, and that's Ooh. cool. Um, yeah. They both impacted. Let's get back to Arosa. Where were we with that conversation? Shit. Uh. Drake. Yeah. You love Little Wayne. Now you searching Drake. You loving Drake, and you said I could do this too. Mm-hmm. What is your next step? What do you know? Like. That's when Did I you know, like, writing. oh, I need a mic, I need a nah. logic, nah. I need a Pro Tools. Mm-mm. So what was the I next was just step? Writing. Just writing bars. I just started writing little to, rhymes to, and to shit. To what beats? To like, to instrumentals like that that I liked. Okay. So, so like, industry beats. Yeah. So one of the first ones that I ever did was uh, I think it was Summer Love by like Justin Timberlake. Summer love, summer love, summer love. I can't wait to fall in love with you. With you. Oh, so I did a remix. I did like yeah. a freestyle That's shit to Timberland. that. Timberland. I wrote to that. Um, uh, real I, quick, uh, Timberland announced that he and Justin Timberlake just finished a new album and it yeah. should be out this year. Yeah, I did see that. And, and Missy dropping the album too. Word. And if you've never heard the 2020 project by Justin Timberlake Who, Missy? produced by Timberland, go check it out. That joint is five mics to me. Uh, Missy new album by Timberland? Yeah, by Tim. Damn, yeah. coming soon. Tim is a uh, word. That's just Shout gonna be crazy. Timberland. Word. So you're writing to to well, you're writing to Timberland beats actually. If you're writing to that JT joint, yep. Amazing, amazing. So, uh, I I I put that on my first mixtape. It was called Lift Off back in 2012. In 2012, was it a physical mixtape? It was. I made physical. I made physical. Copies. Yep, okay. I made physical copies. We I put it on, on that piff. We weren't. Oh. Hell yeah, that piff. Shout out to that piff. Oh, that it's shit. still alive. It's yes. not dead. Don't let the internet fool you. Go back to that piff. You find classic music. That shit is like a digital library. Digital archive. Of <clears throat> mad artists before anybody knew who they were. Big facts. Before and that they were shit popping. should live forever. So if, if that piff is ever in trouble, donate. Keep them alive forever. That shit is hip hop history. So you're on that piff. I'm on that piff. What, but before you could upload to that piff... How were you recording your music? Oh, yeah. So, like like I said, I, I used to write, started writing rhymes. Uh-huh. I used to work at Lowe's Home Improvement. Okay. I used to write on my uh, on the receipt paper. Okay. I used to be a cashier. <laughs> so, when I when I could, I would just write on receipt paper. Right. And take that joint home? Yeah. I would I would spit it to my coworkers, and they was fucking with it. That's what's up. <laughs> Hell, yeah. So, I guess that, you know, that kept me going. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I started making YouTube videos, right, with my MacBook. Okay. 
like you know little freestyle videos i did the one to to the justin timberlake timbo okay mm -hmm. i did that one um it, it did pretty good i guess I, I posted up on facebook and stuff nice right and um i got discovered by someone oh shit word yeah by by some guy that graduated uh, from Full Sail University at the time. Okay, in oh, Florida, music. right? Yeah. Full Sail no. in Florida, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they in Orlando. That that's a dope ass. Yep. Group. So yeah. two of my friends, they went there. Well, not yet. This guy found me uh -huh. through my videos that I was posting. He he wanted to link up. He was from Jersey. Okay, I think he was from Belleville. Shout out to Eric, okay. Eric Redondo, my man. Shout out to Bro, Big E, Eric definitely Redondo. Definitely pushed me forward. You feel nice. me? He brought me to Brooklyn. Okay. To meet Will Baker. Okay. Shout out to Will, man. Oh, Love yeah. you. Shout out to Will Baker. He's in Who's Brooklyn. Will Baker? He's in Brooklyn. Monster producer. Okay. He's got a studio called Slide Studios in, in Bushwick, okay. Brooklyn. Go check that out. Shout yeah, out shout that. out to that. Um, he produced Let You Go. Okay. He oh, produced, nice. He produced uh, Paradise. Word? All right. Mm -hmm. So we got to get Will up here. So then. I met, he brought, Eric brought me to, to go see Will. Mm -hmm. And definitely record this. <laughs> See, he's an exec at all times, and I like it. Yep, he's thinking. He's thinking ahead. Yes. So, uh, went to Will in Brooklyn to his apartment, bro. It wasn't a studio. It was right. just a mic and his laptop. But yo, it sounded crazy. He, knew how to work he it. just yeah. graduated full sale. He right. knows what he's doing, he knows right? Him and Eric just both graduated full sale. So I guess that's how they connected. I don't right. really know. Right. But um. We made two songs with another rapper uh, that day. Okay. Um, and that was your first was, time recording. That was my first with time recording. Else? No, it was my first time recording. Period. But you had to have recorded to upload the videos, or did you only nah, spit just, them for video form? It was just, it was yeah, through the video. I didn't even have the video phones. It was just through the MacBook, through the photo booth. Shit. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. You feel All me? Right. So uh, yeah, I recorded that, and then did two songs that day. And then went home, mm -hmm. right? And then you know we were supposed to be something called Underline Entertainment. Okay, uh, drop some mixtapes, <coughs> you know, just move forward and drop music. Right. That never got to you know I kept waiting and waiting. It yeah, never, never got, happened. never happened. So then that's when I started taking matters into my own hands, and then that's when I started you know learning how to uh, learn about Logic. There you go. Mm -hmm. Learning okay. about how to uh, engineer uh -huh. and record. Where were you learning this from? At my crib. But from where? What oh, yeah. source? On the MacBook. Who's teaching it to you? Nobody. YouTube. YouTube. Me. University. Oh, no, you me. Just, you're just learning it as you go. Yeah. On. But I, you're not even visiting YouTube for a how-to? You're no, just downloading the, the program time, and no. fucking with it? I, I, I don't even think we were uh, like in tune with that stuff yeah, back yeah, then. Yeah, uh, you feel me? Not yet. Right. Um. You know, eventually. Wow, that makes it more impressive. So eventually, you know, then I did get to... You know, go watch the tutorials and get better at things that right. I already knew. Mm -hmm. Right. But you know, I felt like you know, like EQing and shit, <laughs> hard. You Hell know, that's, yeah. that's something that takes time, practice. Hell you yeah. know, and you gotta have ear. the ear, bro. Yeah. 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 Not anybody could just do it. Yeah. So like, you know, that's important. I'm still not that great at it. Right. You know, compared to other engineers, but I'm getting better. Right. Um, but I know I know more than the basics. Yeah. And. You know, I started just making music, bro. And then I, I, I compiled, uh, what I think it was 11 or 12 tracks for like the liftoff in 2012. Okay. And I dropped that, did the artwork. Yourself? Yeah, did everything. The, the graphic design, everything. The promo, everything by myself. Oh. Yeah. That was my first thing. And then I also made the hard copies, bro. Yeah. I literally printed out. I used my, my school's printer because uh -huh. they have all the paper and all the print. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yo, can I use your thing? I was cool with everybody. Yeah. So, you know, they let me use it. I used to print out like 200 sheets and, I and then fold, stick them on. cut it, <laughs> fold it. They go put it in the thing. So, yeah, Were you man. selling them? I, I tried to, but not hard enough, I guess. Okay. Yeah. But you gave them out. Yeah. Definitely gave them out. Okay. okay. Shout out to that. The lift off on that piff. Go check that out. Yeah, yeah. So how old are you around this time now? Still 16, 17? At 20, I was like 20, 22. And you just dropped your first mixtape. What was the reception like? What feedback did you receive? Uh, I don't know. I guess it wasn't promoted properly. But but who the people that did hear it fucked with it? They liked it. 
they liked it. it wasn't you know they they fucked with it yeah. i had supporters i had uh, a couple fans you feel me That's what's up. but it wasn't anything substantial you know they but liked we all got to start the, somewhere the, the, the quality wasn't there you know, so compared to music they're already listening to, it's not exactly. something that could it's really compare. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, but... But they fucked with that it, That reminds me of a Drake lyric. He said he got in the car and he played his song for Shorty and she uh-huh. was like, put on that ludicrous. Right. You feel me? Right, right. So it's not... You can't compare yourself to uh, an, an established artist recording in the hit factory and shit, but if your shit is getting love, dude... you. Nobody starts with a hundred fans, no, you know. Yeah. You start with two, and that two turns to five, to ten, to fifteen, and it That's multiplies and keeps going. Yeah. So the yeah, fact that right. you even had supporters on your first project, man, congratulations, bro. Thank don't, you. Man. Yeah, don't don't like downplay it. Big it up, shit. <laughs> I, had, I had three people that loved it, and those are my three <laughs> motherfucking people right there. <laughs> <laughs> the three people that made yeah, it. Yeah, I fuck with them. It. They still get free merch. Word yeah, up. Word. Did you ever go back now and listen to it? Hell and be yeah. like, damn, I was bugging. Hell yeah. <laughs> this shit was yeah. ass. Hell yeah. All right, so what? Nah, this what? shit was fire. Yeah. It, yeah. it sound like ass. It sound though. ass, but it was still, you know, the <laughs> diamond in the rough. Yeah, you thinking, damn, yeah. if, I, if I actually would have taken the time and mastered this shit Very properly, mm-hmm. it would have been fucking something. But, but you can't beat yourself up because... Yeah. Who knew that at the time? Nah, not not even that. Yeah, that looking shit. back, it's like okay, I, I needed to go through this to, exactly. to to learn like that. I needed better quality, especially now finding out that you did it all alone with no mentor. Because mm. at least if you had a mentor, yeah, you know, bro, that's you start, another thing. You you get a head start on others, but to do it from nothing and just learn it. That's exactly. That's fucking tough, bro. Yeah, that's like if I put the laptop in front of you right now and fucking give you a program you never saw and be like, all right, do some shit. Make some hot shit. Yeah, you'd be like, what right. the fuck? I don't even know how to start right now. Yeah, exactly. So shout out to that, man. Shout out to you. Yeah. Then after the mixtape, um, did you continue to do music? Yeah, I and, continued And you've to never do. stopped since then? I never really stopped. Uh, in, whether it was in certain aspects that I was working on music, whether I was writing, right. you know, not that I would go and lay it down right away, but I would always write new content mm-hmm. and just... Yeah, try to get better. What about the production? When did the production begin? Yeah. Um, as far as what? Like making beats. Making beats. Oh, making, making uh, your own music. music. Before I even dropped Lift Off. Yeah? yeah. Yeah, like before I even dropped Lift Off, um, you know, I, I would write, like, I would come up with skeletons of the beats. Uh-huh. You know, they weren't so, like, um, advanced. Right. right. They were very simple. Uh-huh. But um, I knew it one day I'd get it better. You know what I'm saying? How did you start making beats? Like on what? On MPC, on Logic. On Logic. Okay. On Logic with the without the keyboard, without yeah, yeah. anything. Like exactly. I used to use the keys, like exactly on the on the actual keyboard of the computer, right. you know, and use that as the the <coughs> piano like, player. Oh shit! Right, right, right. Actually, Shout out to Logic, man. A lot of people yeah, have man. created magic with Logic. That's crazy. Yeah, bro. It's it's cool. It's cool. So on the road, bro, was the first beat I ever started cooking up. Yeah. Yeah, and I started writing. I wrote to it. Okay. You know, everything. I wrote the hook and everything, the verses, right then and there. Nice. But and then, you didn't drop that till 2021. I didn't drop that so until 2021. you just 2021. had it in the stash. Yeah, man. I think you just said we went to an hour. Okay. One hour? Okay. Um. So, yeah. So, you didn't drop that one until 2021. So, that was in the stash. So, I'm assuming at this time now you're beginning to compile your music. Uh, for what would become the Broke But Not Poor compilation. Yeah, But man. you're probably not even aware of it. Nah. You're just making music and stashing. Yeah, I'm stashing. just making music, stashing. Uh, I got a whole vault of lyrics, you know, in, in uh, all of my devices, like in my phones and my other laptops. To this day? Yeah. I even went through some shit, bro, where I lost my MacBook. Somebody stole it. Ah, heartbreak. So like Drake, they got all your lyrics on some shit, and they probably they, they probably hope, I don't know for good. I, I had that like shit, you never got it back. Like never got it back. I had to start all over. Do you know who stole it? My, I have, I have <laughs> reason to believe. <laughs> you, you, you might. You have on the list, you Playboy. Feel me? But it's it's all good. Like I I needed that, and that shows. You know, what I'm saying I don't care what nobody says. Yeah. You not you can't stop me. Right, right. You're fighting you know, you through tried, all these You obstacles. tried to that was a take test. me down. That was yeah. A test. So when did you um, realize, like, all right, I got all these songs. Um, I want to create the album. It was just time to drop, you know, an album. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Like you'd already been dropping the singles, right? I had a couple singles. Uh-huh. Um, so I just dropped those, but then I I just needed the album. I have so many songs that I could just get rid of right yeah. now. Let me do it in the album form. Okay. You feel me? But these songs were also important to me. Right. And they all fit, you know, with the like I feel like I cur- curated a good album, you know, to to represent my struggle. You know what I'm saying? Coming up. Right. And and the first phase of my career. Yes. You feel me? Was the album released on BCMG? Yeah. Was that the first album released on it was BCMG? A, it was the first album released on BCMG. All right, so for those that don't know, BCMG is the Bergen County Music Group, of which Arozo is the founder and the CEO. The first project, come to find out now, was his own project, Broke But Not Poor. So you put out Fact. the project, you founded BCMG, your album is out, you're dropping the singles. When do you say, all right, now I'm going to step it up into exec mode. Let me get some other artists under me. Let me start working their stuff. Let me create this entity beyond just myself. Honestly, I've always wanted to to help other artists. Okay. And I was already doing so, you know, even before I founded and created BCMG. Um, Bobby Punk was one of my first, like, artists that I started really, really getting in tune with. Mm-hmm. Um because we lived a block away from each other and we had a mutual friend. Shout out to Anthony De La Cruz. Uh Shout he out to he put a, he introduced us because we both made music and we were both upcoming artists. Right. So we just started working together. Nice. You know, I would go to his crib all the time cuz my you know, I had my little setup but you know, it wasn't, you know, the space wasn't, you know. Right, right, right. We all started small. Yeah. It was whack. So, you know, Roly had a little bit better space or whatever. So, you know, I would always be at Roly's and he lived a block away. Yeah. So we became best friends and, like, we started making music and, you know, um, I, I started guiding him and helping him. You know, I felt like, you know, he could improve in areas. And, you know, I started helping him and he listened. Yeah. And, you know, he got better. So there, there goes my artist development, mm-hmm. right? I started developing an artist and... You know, we just continued, continued. I would always, like, you know, give him little, uh, little, uh, how would you say? Like pointers? Not even pointers. Like, I would tell him, I would tell him my ideas about, like, BCMG. Oh, okay. Like, we should get started. You know what I'm saying? He he already had his thing going on, Elite Society he created. And I was like, yo, maybe that could, you know, we could work together and partner up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, that's where it just all started. And and then I started, you know, uh, fucking with this 19-year-old, bro, from Powell Park, where I grew up. Okay. I grew up in Powell State Park. Okay. So I, I, I would always see this kid walking by, you know, because I work in town. And <coughs> he'd be walking by, and, I, you know, I finally said what up to him one day. And then come to, come to realize this motherfucker makes music. Yo, he, he got, um... Yeah. That's how men make friends nowadays. Yeah, you walk up. by a motherfucker ten times, and on the eleventh time, you give him the head now. Yo, what up? Yo, what up? The twelfth time, yo, real that. shit. Yeah, the third, the thirteenth time, yeah, start talking. Yeah, then, bro. then, then, boom, you got a new friend. Real shit, bro. <laughs> and so you know, he was just, I don't know. I, I think he was like a friend of a friend, <laughs> okay. but I didn't know him. Right. But I always seen him around. I always seen him walking. He works at the pool. So he works in town too, right. you know what I'm saying? So I would always see him walk in. I finally, we finally chopped it up one day. Apparently he makes music. I was like, okay, that's what's up, bro. Let, let me hear what you got. Yeah. And then I started working with him. Started doing photo shoots for him, you know what I'm saying? Just like, you know, let's develop you. Mm-hmm. You're 19, bro. You got swag. Exactly. You look like you're 30. Mm-hmm. Let's do this. You feel me? So I started fucking around with Laz, that lavish poppy. Okay, that's what I haven't met. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then, la- you know, we started working. Uh, and then, I even before that, I already knew Tanner. I already knew mm-hmm. Dilly, mm-hmm. right? But we never really got in tune, you know, making music together. Tanner would invite me to, to studios. That's how I met Dilly. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We were just, Tanner was, me and Tanner were always cool. Mm-hmm. So he would bring me around to the studios or whatever. That's how I met Dilly. And then one day, bro, got had Tanner, Roly, Dilly together. I think we all went to the studio. We had a great session. 
And then I t started telling them about BCMG and the vision. Right. And then they was with it. I was going to say they was all with it. They was with it. So then that's how we started. And and then I brought script along. I was like, yo, script. I already knew script. Script was my boy. I was like, yo, script. Come to the studio, yo. We about to go to the studio. I want you to meet these guys. Mm -hmm. And then boom. We just all, I, I think Tanner knew script already. Like, okay. But on a very brief level right you know what i'm saying so then we all went to the studio we vibed up and it was crazy the yeah. energy was real and yeah man that's up. how it started we've spoken about the energy that's created when creatives are together Get together yeah and uh how that's very difficult to replicate so shout out to that man shout out to all the members of bcmg <clears throat> shout out to uh once again the brother rozo lily dollars script poppy pong fyb tanner lavish poppy 201 ja and Avery of AF Picks, official cameraman for BCMG. Yeah. So now, <clears throat> you got your group of artists. They're down. They're with the movement. How do you begin to plan, or is there a plan, as far as this guy's coming first, mm. then we're following up with this, or is it just everybody create and let's flood it with everything? So we, we communicate a lot together. Like we're in FaceTime groups every day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we always communicate and we don't really worry about <coughs> who's coming up first or any of that. We we know each other's talents. We know what we're all capable of. And like we're we're really truly a family. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. we really ride together. And um we know that, you know, if one of us makes it Mm -hmm. Or one of us pops, then we oh, all gonna pop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Especially when they start getting familiar with who we are, right? Who we really are, and like how we really work, and it's, it's dope. And I I feel like that's something we gotta actually document more. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, studio, I, I definitely. I think you guys should be it. documenting everything. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, I agree. Any studio sessions, all the behind meetings, the stuff, shows. I, know, yes. I feel like y'all do a lot of shows between yeah. all the artists. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've been. I've been trying to get everybody lined up for as many things as possible, um, and we've all been contributing towards that. Okay. Like Bobby Bang, you know, got us the shit with barcode. Nice. Um, and then uh, through his other connection, got us uh, another gig in Yonkers. Nice. Right. I got us a a show in Philly. So, <laughs> so you know, we just all working together. And I'm trying to I'm trying to lead, you know, properly. Right. Okay. Yeah. So now as the leader. Um, do you ever struggle with dealing with so many artists? Because, you know, each artist has his own um, ego, for one. Yeah. Uh, for two, each artist has his own life, struggles in their own life, shit they got to be responsible for. Papi Pong got a baby coming. Mm. Script just had a baby. Right. Um, do you ever find yourself, um, find it difficult? to keep everyone on the righteous path? Um, I wouldn't say difficult or easy, but it's just something that comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just something you gotta do. Yeah, you don't even realize it at yeah. the time, right? Don't even realize That's, it. Uh, that comes with being a leader, bro. Yeah. yeah. Um, so shout you gotta out to be that, there man. for everybody. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like you said, everybody got their own little struggles and and I try, I try my best to, you know, to help out in any way I can, whether it's giving advice or being there for them or, you know what I'm saying, just, like, helping them get through it. Yeah. Have you studied any other CEOs and, like, seen how they do stuff or what their mentality or mindset is? Honestly, that's a great question. I haven't really studied anyone in particular. Right. But I should. Yeah, mm. I definitely would and, advise you. And I, but I, I definitely want to be, you know, on the caliber of Jay Z. Yeah, yeah. Sean Carter. Start, the man. start before Jay Z. Go back to like Russell Simmons, or and mm. see how he built Def Jam. Yeah, and uh, where it started in a college dorm. Him yep. and Rick Rubin, two yeah. guys. Yep, two dudes you at know, NYU. Next, next thing you know, they they are the most dominant um, hip hop label. For a good thirty years, probably. Yeah, you know, between eighties, nineties, and the early half of 2000. To the point where they were the premier hip-hop label that everybody wanted to sign there. Yeah. And like, then they birthed labels. Yeah. They exactly. birthed Rockefeller. They birthed um, Murder, Inc. They birthed Rough Riders. Um, Rough Riders. All that shit. 
uh, hmm. DTP, yeah. good music, Def Jam South, good music. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you know, eventually, you know, BCMG could be the umbrella, right? And then you know, Dilly Dollars might have Dilly. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's already. I, we've already talked about that stuff. I w- I would <clears> love to do that. Like Dilly's got Overlit. Overlit. Uh, Poppy Bond got Elite Society. Okay. Tanner's got Balance. Okay. Uh, Scrib got Always Ahead. But don't get too far ahead that they're focused on the other shit. Right, and, right. And BCMG ain't where it needs to be yet. Right. Let's let let's make sure everyone has the BCMG first and foremost, so that y'all can get to the level that y'all need to be at, yeah. and then y'all branch off into the other shit. But definitely, I like that y'all are thinking that far ahead. Um, what are the plans for the rest of this year? Well, we do, we definitely have a lot of music to drop. We've been in the studio consistently. Um, we we definitely got to shoot some videos. We got to get our bread up. Got to get our bread up as a group. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So we could you know invest in ourselves yeah. and invest in the right things. I'm trying right. to you know what I'm saying I want to eliminate that you know what I'm saying by getting investors and stuff. Okay. You Funding, know people yeah. to fund yeah. fund us so that way you know they don't have to go out of pocket. <laughs> um, but we got. I, I want to throw some concerts, some mini concerts. Right. You know, sell some tickets, get us exposure. That's what we need is exposure. We need to we need to get we need to step it up on the content level. Right. You know, what I'm saying you start vlogging more. Mm-hmm. We need to start posting more. We need to get on every uh, every media outlet, every media outlet, every platform. You know, whether it's TikTok, Twitter, mm-hmm. Instagram, Facebook. We need to be in all those uh, constantly, and we need to shoot videos. We need to shoot videos and get our faces out there, get our characters out there. Like, we're all different characters. It's crazy. Exactly. Is, is the video something that you want to get into more uh, or get back into? Because you said you shot a few videos. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind that stuff. Um, I, 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 if, I can't, if, if we can't find somebody to shoot our video, right. I'll, I'll, I'll have no problem shooting, you know, whatever we have to shoot. You know what's funny is that... Um, the, he, Hold your thought. Go the ahead. brother F shoots videos, just so you know. Yeah, okay. He he's really good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, the funny thing is that he said, you know, that you remind him a lot of himself. Hell yeah. But he won't shoot the video. He'll find somebody like brother F to do it, which is smart. <laughs> yeah. Right, Where right, you right. actually like to shoot the video, you want to do it yourself. No, yeah, he'll yeah, be yeah. like, no, fuck that. Let me do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which well, is smart. You know, you've got to know your strengths. <clears throat> true, you true. Play indeed. up to your strengths. Um, <clears throat> if I'm not good at something, I'll find someone who is good at it. Who's and good and tell them what it is that I want right. to see, and, yeah. and they're working together, we'll do it. And I think that goes with anything, and, and I think that's actually smart business. You know, um, if I can't do it how I want it myself, let me find somebody who can, and I don't mind, yeah. you know, uh, paying them to get yeah. it to the level that I want it. Puff Daddy don't play the piano, and a motherfucker be pianoed up on his songs. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Can we expect the BCMG compilation? Yes. I look forward to that. Yes. Can we get that before the end of the year? <laughs> yes. And okay. if you do that, if you do, um, when you do the BCMG <clears throat> compilation, you definitely have to get all of that. You have to get the content for that. Yes. Yes. And put it we out like m- try to put movie. it out like as a as a like as a package. Yes. yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I believe mm-hmm. Cole did that with the Revenge of the Dreamers album. Right. Uh, I actually believe he's done that with yeah. each Revenge of the Dreamers right. album, and there's three volumes. Because so yeah, yeah. Because I'm pretty sure those those studio sessions gotta be crazy. Like, it gets chippy in there. Like, who's got the best verse? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do what? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, like, nah. We're actually don't... supportive. No, no, no. I don't mean, like, I don't mean maliciously, but that good competitive vibe. Nah, you know yeah. We've definitely, like, we've definitely got into the studio, and we, we've paired up. And was like, yo, all right, yo, Dilly, me and Dilly, Scrib and Tanner, yeah. uh, Bobby Bong and Lavish Bobby. Yeah. Right? And That's dope, yo. And we just, like, all right, bet. You pick a beat. You guys have to come up with the beat. Who who's gonna write, you know what I'm saying? Come up. Who's gonna come up with the best song? Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. And then we've done that twice. So we have like six songs off that. Have y'all ever done it where it's the same beat for all of y'all? Nah. Nah. Try that out one time. I like yeah. that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. And then I see like who that. comes up with the best yeah, song exactly. on, yeah. on the same beat. Exactly. That's fire. Yeah. Hell I yeah. like that. That's, that's what I mean. That friendly that's competition. A yeah. That's a good one. Because not for yeah. nothing, like we always talk about uh steel sharpening steel. And mm-hmm. that will definitely sharpen all of them. And they'll and you might end up with three great songs. Exactly. That's the other byproduct yeah. of it that you're gonna wind right. up with amazing content. Right. You know what I'm saying? So Blood, my bad. Uh any questions for the brother of Rosa or any input? I feel like you've been quiet for a little <laughs> nah, while. No, I'm good. I'm good. Y'all uh, good. Keep, all right. keep rolling. Keep Just rolling. checking, my brother. All right. So now, um 
BCMG compilation drop in 2023. You heard it here first Chip. on the Godcast. We need that. We're yeah. going to keep the pressure on the brother of Rozo to make <laughs> sure that shit happens. Um, any other plans for 2023? Do you have? Are you yourself going to drop more music? Any new projects? Yeah, man. I got a lot of music. Matter of fact, you sent me a song, um, which was dope. You did something on your IG that if we voted or if we... I don't remember what it was. If we interacted oh, yeah. with the post, we got a free song. Yep. Did you? I got a free you song. You got it? Oh, yeah. All right, cool. Right, send my email. Absolutely. So Hell I yeah. like that um, creative forward thinking. You know, interact with me and you'll get something. How about how about uh, BCMG merch? Yes. Coming Somebody soon. had a hoodie recently. Oh, yep. when Dilly was up here, he had the hoodie. Yeah, yep. hoodie? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yep. we yeah, got yeah. Some, We got some hoodies, but we, we, we only made them for ourselves right. so far. Right. Um, we had a couple, like a little bit of Actually, demand on it. But yeah. we haven't pulled the trigger yet. Uh, I, you could blame you me. Yeah. You could blame me. Y'all that's looking on me. for funding. That's exactly. your funding right, right there. Yeah, that's Boom. it. Sell the merch, hoodies, hats. All that. Uh, shorts now that the shorts, weather star yep. t-shirts. That Bandanas. The weather star, yeah, all that shit. Yep. Body shorts for the socks. men and women. Socks. People love socks. Yep. Get your Why sock are socks so popular now? Yo, because people... Socks. You got to think of it this way. I, 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 I thought the same way you did for a minute until I actually thought about it. I'm like, yo... If you have dope sneakers on, but you got plain Jane socks on, man, like, eh. Socks yeah, make sneakers pop sometimes, B. True, but could the socks take away attention from the sneakers? Therein, therein lies your personal style and balance, bro. Yeah, no, I'm good off socks. <laughs> I, I don't even like show. I barely like showing socks. For real? Yeah. Uh, just, well, you got cankles and shit. So. But I got, I, I was voted sexiest ankles. <laughs> hey, yeah. 1999 through 2019, 20 years running. <laughs> Don't listen to the haters out there. Kangles There's always like, a hater. This guy got cankles like elephants over here. It's, that's when I'm swollen. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> Drink more water, fam. I don't know what to tell you, man. I got to get the back fuck? on the diet. This guy over here. <laughs> yo, Blood, how's your diet going, bro? Yo, I'm down like 30 pounds. Get out of here for what? real? Apex 31? That's what's up. Yeah, well, well, the Apex 31 plus the other one I was doing before, so that's had jump-started me, but uh -huh. Apex got me down like 15 pounds. Shout out to the brother Angelo, nice. Apex 31. If y'all ain't up on it, make sure y'all go Google it. Go to Instagram at Apex 31. Check at I, I Health Wellness. I Healthy Wellness, excuse mm -hmm. me. Um, get you the Apex 31. Summer's coming. You want to be out there in your crop tops and your thotty shorts. Get it right. <laughs> When I pull up here oh, in my crop top and my thotty shorts, y'all better be ready. Cause that, and this, my head look big as hell, yo, because I'm so skinny, nigga. So now uh, my head is I, I can't help you with that, kid. I don't know nothing I about like that a struggle. Thick man, yo. You, you, at least, <laughs> but at least now you can wear your G-Unit tank top and you'll be True? fit. True? You back, shit. baby? You'll be dancing on me. A G-Unit tank top will be dancing on me, yo. Uh, I want to uh, see BCMG like, tank tops. Yo. I'm under 200 pounds That's right different. now. That's different. I haven't been under 200 pounds in years. That's what's up, my brother. My brother yes, shit, bro. Congratulations, everybody out there on their health mission. Stick to it. If you're trying to gain weight, stick with it. If you're trying to get buff, six-pack, whatever, stick with it. Mm -hmm. If you're just trying to lose so you can fit in your clothes without looking funny, stick with it, man. We support all of y'all. We support BCMG, all the artists. Uh, my bad. You said you have new music coming this year, like a new project? Yeah, man. We can I got expect it. it. I got a couple singles I want to drop, and then I, I yeah, I, I, I look because I'm writing it down. So if I write it down, that means it got to happen now. See uh, about the album, maybe <laughs> I don't know. No pressure. When exactly I'll write, I'll when write the album going to come out, but I definitely got some new music for y'all. Okay. Um, a lot of dope stuff. I'm, I'm gonna start performing more. So have you um, performed? Just be on the lookout. Yeah. Where have you performed? Um, I've been performing is, uh, everywhere I can. Recently, um, I just performed in Philly. Uh, before that. I performed in at one of my boys' events that was over here in Lynnhurst, New Jersey. Nice. And then before that, um, I did a, a spot in Teaneck called Absalom. Oh. And then before that, um, I did, um, damn, what's it called? Arlene's Grocery in the city. Okay. So you're building up a resume of performance. Yeah. You like um, being on stage? I love being on stage. It's, it's a, so much it's fun. A different energy. Yeah. Shout out to that, man. So we look yeah. forward new singles coming from a Rozo, a BCMG compilation album dropping this year, 2023. The pressure's on. Godcast exclusive. Oh, we shit. look forward to more shows. We look forward to <clears throat> some videos. Um, 
Merch. Definitely need some definitely, merch. Definitely. The next on my list. Word, please. Um, yeah, that'd be dope. Yeah, man. Congratulations again, Arozo, my brother. I, 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 I like your energy. I like your drive. I like what you're doing with the guys. Um, keep leading them. You know, keep them all on the righteous path. I think it's it's often overlooked how much of a role you're playing in people's lives beyond music. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, whether you realize or n- realize it or not, or whether it's intentional or not, you're guiding these guys' lives. You know, in a way, you're keeping them out of jail. You're keeping them out of the streets. Um, for a brother like Dilly, you're keeping them out of them damn strip clubs and them, <laughs> them thotty situations. I'm trying. Um, <laughs> and that's no diss, Dilly. I love you, bro. Shout um, out to Dilly. But, you know, good kid right shout there. out to that, man, because that's, that's a responsibility that you've chosen to take on. And, uh, and it's commendable. And whether these guys even realize it now, 20 years from now, they may realize, like, yo, I could have been in a real fucked up situation. Even if they never make it in music. Right. Even if they never sell a fucking album, you know, they'll still be in a better position in life than they would have been had you not come into the picture. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to that, man. Always remember that. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep pushing forward. Keep pushing the dudes. BCMG is the movement. Everybody make sure you're following at Arozo, at <laughs> A-R-O-Z-O underscore. Go download the music. Go download the albums. Go watch the videos on YouTube, um, on Instagram, on TikTok. Before we let you go, we're going to do 10 shots with BSOP. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that now, matter of fact. Uh, all right, so you already know the, how the game goes. You've been here three I think times. Think so. Yeah. I'm just gonna ask you ten rapid fire questions. You ask some minimal thought. We'll go circle back and discuss your answers when we're done. So here we go. Number ten, Nikki or Cardi? Who you who who you taking? Uh, physically or it don't it don't matter. Just <laughs> all, all all around. Who, who would you rather prefer, Nikki or Cardi? Nikki or Cardi? Uh, shit, Nikki. Nikki. All right. Number I'm nine. Physically. I'm Shout out physically. to the Barb's. Yeah. Physically. Damn, it's a tough one too. They pretty much got the same body. They both constructed the same. Word. Right. Yeah, but one's been used and abused, and one's Damn, this guy's such the a queen <laughs> that you know of. <laughs> <laughs> that I know of. Go find the videos, bro. They exist. They exist. Yo, yo, Nikki looks like she's been used and abused too, bro. Well, then she cleaned up better. Moving on. All right, moving on. <laughs> no, number nine. Would you prefer to be the talent or management? Because you played, you've worn both hats. Damn, uh, both. You like being both? Yeah, both is right. acceptable. And okay. he wears multiple hats, not just talent, uh, not just. No, I know. I'm just saying. But in this instance, yeah. all right, uh, Lauren or Mary J. Blige? Who are you taking musically? Lauren Lord. Hill or Mary J. Mary J. Mary J. Mary J. Mm-hmm. We talked about the about physically. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Again, one's blood. been used and abused, and one's the queen, bro. <laughs> uh, we spoke oh, of the. No, uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm just kidding. They're both the queens. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we spoke of the Wu Tang th- uh, Three Six influence. He's, we uh, all agreed, uh, minus Blood, that Three Six has a higher, a bigger influence on music. Musically, musically, not culturally. Not culturally. Uh, you listen to both these acts. Who would you rather listen to, Backstreet or In Sync? I think. Who was your favorite back then? What the fuck was the connection then? As we were talking about listening to Backstreet Boys, how we started listening. <laughs> what to- that had to do with Three Six and Wu Tang? <laughs> yo, we're going back. Yo, the the the, the prism right there. Carry on, the carry spectrum. On. <laughs> you are the spectrum. Damn. Hey, um, yo, honestly, I like Backstreet Boys first, but I think In Sync had the better songs. In Sync had better music. I agree. But NSYNC was more hip hop influenced, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Mm, it was, it was. Now that now that I think of it, no doubt. All right, all right. Uh, bigger icon in your opinion, Eminem or Wayne? Oof. Oh man, that's a tough in one. In my opinion, yeah. Uh, of course, Eminem. Ooh. Shout out to M. Shout out to Wayne. I love Little Wayne, man. I believe. Love Eminem. So my two two of my favorite Little Wayne songs are the new one, Can't Nobody, which I, I love. I've probably listened to it a hundred oh, times. That was a song yesterday. Three, three days. And also POMS, Pistol on My Side. Both songs produced by Swiss Beats. Right. Maybe Little Wayne should do a project with Swiss Beats. That'd be all right. Well, I, I, that's I'd a, fuck that's with a good that. take. Yeah, I'd fuck with that. Okay. Broad statement. Number uh, six. 
Better producer, Timberland or RZA? Who would you rather work with? Timberland. Okay. That's a good one. Uh, singles or albums in 2023? Which one would you rather prefer? Singles or albums? Singles. Yeah. Uh, hip-hop or R&B? What's your take? Which one are you taking? Hip-hop. Yeah. Even though I love R&B. Who's a bigger artist, Bad Bunny or Drake at this time? Damn. In your opinion. Drake. Drake still. Yeah. Is Drake still the king. Bad Bunny's huge. That's only He's nine. That's not nine, bro. How? That's nine. Because we already You're did the Wu-Tang You're slacking, bro. That's two Wu-Tang. shows in a row. Nah, we did the Wu-Tang. It's, a, it's part of it right there. It's ten, bro. The Wu-Tang one didn't count. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's slacking. F, where, get management. Get ma- <laughs> Where's Dolly? I need this host replaced immediately. He's I slacking. A Rosa, I got number 10 for you. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's hear it. So I heard a lot of references <clears throat> to Uptown in your music. You'd rather go for the night to hang out at Mama Juana's or at La Marina? Ooh. Damn. La Marina still exists? No. I thought they closed it down. No, they did. Well, La Marina. Oh, right, exactly. How about that? Yeah, it, of course, La Marina. Right by the water. Even though La, uh, Mama Juana's right down the block. Yeah, you go after. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> But La Marina had the sand and everything. Yeah. Shout That's out to that. Pop. Shout out to La Marina. And also, yeah. Drake and Be- uh, not Drake. Hove and Beyonce never went to Mama Juana's. They definitely pulled up to La Marina one time. Nice. They did? Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? In a boat. In order. Yeah, yeah, I don't think they would. There's no reason they should <laughs> go to Mama Juana's. Yeah. All right. Quick review. Nikki over Cardi, the queen. Shout out to the queen. Shout out to the barbs. Shout out to the Cardi hive, whatever they're called. I don't, I don't even know. Blood, do you know? What's the Cardi hive? Bar- aren't, aren't they the Bardies or some shit like Are that? Are they the Bardies? I don't fucking know. I don't know. But shout out to both Bardies. of them. Bardies. Uh, exec or artist? Yeah, talent both. or management. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the brother of Rosa wears like 10 different hats. Big facts. Um, so shout out to that, man. Keep rocking. Mary J over Lauren. Mary There's J. no wrong answer, bro. Yeah. They're both, you know, iconic, classic queens. Um, InSync over Backstreet Boys, I totally agree 100%, although I am also a fan of both, but InSync had a couple more slaps. M over Wayne, that's actually a great debate topic oh, yeah. to have one day. Yeah. Um, we'd need a, maybe you can come back and represent the Wayne side. Her. I'm with it. Um, Tim true. over RZA, for the artist that Arozo is, I totally agree, because Arozo yeah, yeah. is uh, a modern Commercial, artist. Mucho, no. But I know he fucks vibey. with Wu-Tang as well. Like no, I of know, course. I know he's got a a, a strong knowledge of Wu Tang. Of course, as well. but he and be a better appreciation fit with Timberland. True. On the conversation with Wu Tang versus Three Six, really quickly. Uh-huh. Did I, I mean I'm not positive, but didn't RZA more or less pioneer the soulful samples to that? You know, Kanye took it to the next level, and so on and so forth. Everyone else is That's that not point. influential in itself? Um, yes and no. Um, I'm not sure if he was the first to do it. I no, know I he was the I, first to gain popularity. I feel like a lot of it. people, yeah, I feel like a lot of people um, bit off of that. And, and he oh. is credited as that. Yeah. Um, but even that hasn't that sound like kind of faded out. Yeah. But it was it big was popular for about twenty years. Yeah, but then three six is big for like thirty years. Exactly. No, 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 no. Yeah, Big, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three six dropped in ninety six. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but just 96? them. But I'm talking about the influence that they've had. That that track from the Migos only started post twenty ten. We're in twenty twenty three. That's thirteen years right there. True, Alone. but even years. before then, um, ASAP was doing three six sounding mouth, three exactly. six sounding music. Exactly. Um, it, it wasn't only Migos. Exactly. The flow part, yes. Yeah. But as far as production, like, um. Matter of fact, uh, I remember three six saying that um, Justin Timberlake was ra- was performing on their type of production. There you go. Really? Yeah, yeah. that's dope. Yeah, uh, but Justin's from Memphis, right? Exactly. Yeah, so that would make sense. Memphis has a, a an often overlooked history. Um, yeah, yeah, musical, music, mu- musically, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so shout out to Tim. Shout out to uh, three six. Shout out to the RZA. RZA. Singles over albums in 2023. I, I think that's the move. It, yeah. Hip hop over R and B. Um, I'm a little surprised. I choose R and B over hip hop, mm. especially currently. <laughs> um, but hip hop is very R and B nowadays, anyway. So it's like the same thing. All right. Yeah. Drake over Bad Bunny as the biggest universal artist right now. I feel that's debatable. 
Yeah. If I'm that's not why mistaken, I put it up. that's why I, sh- I chose that one. Bad Bunny outstreamed Drake last year. Wow. I yeah. could be wrong, and I don't do no research. Well, but it's possible. Bad Bunny got the, I guess, more international appeal crowd. Appeal. Yeah, yeah, appeal. Global. Yeah. 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 He's, he's big, bro. Because you know, not many people from South America are going to go ahead and, you know, stream Drake. They did a song together, right? They had a song. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's, that's probably a, what yeah, they were that's on probably a, what party next door song. That's what it was. Miami. No, they uh, have a song called Miami. Do they? I was uh, or something yeah, like M I A. M I A. Right? Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, La Marina over Mama Juana's. Yeah. Yeah. Have I ever been to Mama Juana's? I'm sure you have. You've definitely been there. Popping. There's Mama. They got a Mama Juana's go. in Tampa. They're, yeah. yeah, they're everywhere. And now it's a chain. They, they yeah. actually yeah. expanded to a chain restaurant. They're all over the place. Somewhere yeah. I need to go, Mama Juana's. I also still need to go to Ajo and Oregano. Shout out to them in the Bronx. Oh, yeah. um, and there's a Yo, new spot called The Freaking Reekin that I need to go to. Ooh. Yes. Where's that at? Oh, the I've Freakin seen Reekin. it. I've seen it. It is. And this is a the free VIP. shout out. Um, y'all didn't pay me, but if I pull up, maybe, you know, a little free drink or something. That's in the X, right? Yeah. Um, Astoria. It's in Astoria. Oh, Queens. Oh, Astoria Queens? got some good stuff. It's called the Freaking Reekin. Check it out. Um, at the Freaking Reekin restaurant, if y'all are interested. Also, need to go back to um, what's the spot, my man? Sees the Wolf. Uh, Boca de Lobo. Wolf Lodge. Nah, I don't. Boca de Lobo. Boca de Lobo. Yeah. That's or, not the name of. Yeah. It. No way. That was the where we went with Sammy. Yeah, yeah. Not, huh? Casa de Lobo. Same shit. Casa, Casa is different from Boca. Same bullshit. You not. You don't want to be in the Boca. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, Casa de Lobo. There he, you go. He not invited to the next <laughs> outing. This guy. <laughs> Arozo, my brother. Thank you for being Yo, here. Yes, Shout out to you. Yeah, Best yeah, of luck to you. Time, I want one day we're gonna have the whole BCMG in here. That'd be dope for the big. Family interview, that'll maybe when the compilation drops. Funny. Word, yeah. if the compilation drops, we'll bring everybody up. We'll talk about it. We'll review it. We'll fuck with it. Um, I look forward again to, to new music, to merch, everything you guys are doing, man. Best of luck to y'all. Keep pushing. Mm-hmm. Don't let the music business jade you in any way. Uh, you got any shout outs, bro, before I let you go? Yo, shout out to... Shout out to Scrib. Shout out to Dilly. Shout out to Laz. Shout out to Bobby Bong. Shout out to Tanner. Let's get it, man. Shout out to Josh. Shout out to my man Avery for pulling up with me today. That's right. The whole team. Shout out to you guys, man. Shout out to F. Shout out to Luna. Let's get it, man. Uh, Shout out to all my supporters. Shout out to everybody, you know, tuning into the podcast. Absolutely. Uh, Let's get it, man. 2023. It's just begun. Summer's here. Let's go. Yes, the summer is here. Thanks the Lord. Blood, you got any shout outs, my bro? Got my summer body on, baby. Summer <laughs> Yo, shout out to Blood. Yo, you want me to have uh, I Blame Society send you some thotty shorts? Hell yeah. Why oh, not? now we down. All right. <laughs> just, just let them not be pink, though. I don't like I don't like all that. You know, it's too, too flamboyant. Real gangsters you know wear pink, bro, but, I, but I, I'll get you I'm, black. It's all good. You know, but not no thotty shorts in pink. You know, I might rock a pink suit like Nas. But um, yeah, I'm about to go on this cruise, so I need some, some dope shit. I need my RBL shirt too, man. Send me my shit. I need that shit in <laughs> red. You seen the red joint? No, but I got an exclusive orange one. Fucking crazy. But yo, everybody, go listen to uh, the album, a Rosal's album. Listen to that track, Woke Up. That shit fire, man. It's, it's one of the dopest tracks on the album, bro. Go damn. listen to that shit. Thank you, brother. Right up. All right, my bro. Shout man. out to you, man. Oh, Blood, uh, VS, you got any shout outs? Uh, shouts to the show. Shouts to Luna Bright. Shouts to F and uh, Straight Sway, Straight from the studio. Um, shouts to you, my brother. Shouts to BCMG. Shouts to you and, like he said, guiding these dudes. And shouts to your growth and development as well, man. Like, cause as you're making, you know, you're helping them grow. You're also growing yourself. You know what I mean, so like, you know, shouts to you guys, man, for doing positive things, man. Thank you. Word up. Um, shout out to everybody tuned in. Make sure you're following at G A H H D underscore podcast. Make sure you're following the YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to the uh, Spotify page. Make sure you subscribe to the Apple Music page. Get your updates every Thursday. Um, new episodes on YouTube every Sunday. 
Make sure you tune into Club Joe's Radio on AMP Tuesday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 12. Make sure you tune into Cafecito con Sports Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. with your hosts, uh, Mooka Latte. No, you changed it, right? Yeah, he's got, got Diet his... coffee. No, co- no coffee right now, B. Oh, oh not even coffee? coffee? Apex 31. Oh, damn. So yeah. you just... Yeah, for, just uh, yeah. I don't even know. Straight blood. Energy. You just blush out. Yeah. Straight energy. <laughs> And you got your boy right here, Whole Milk, your co-host. <laughs> <laughs> Cafecito <laughs> with no cafe con sports. Tuesday through thir- yeah. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Make sure y'all tune into La Playa Radio. Fridays in the evenings, normally around 8 p.m. With your host, DJ right. Nandito, tu favorito. Make sure you tune into Eardrum Thump Radio with your host, Max Low Hello. Hip Hop. Only on AMP. Um, shout out to Luna Bright. Make sure y'all get your teeth whitened. Summer is coming. You want to have that million dollar smile. Follow at Teeth Whitening Doll. Make sure you follow at Ethan 711 Straight Fuego Studios for all your studio needs. And I want to say that's it. Man. Oh, shout out, of course, again to Raised by Latinos. The Raised by Latinos Godcast collaboration is available now. Go to RaisedByLatinos.com. Purchase. Shout out to everybody listed on the back of the shirts, all the Big originators, facts. all the founders, all the legends, all the upcoming legends, the execs, um, all my Latinos out there. We got more stuff coming. Be on the lookout. Always remember, carry yourself with honor. Carry yourself with pride. Chin up, chest out. I said it backwards. Let me say it again. Always remember, chin up, chest out. Carry yourself with honor. Carry yourself with pride. This is the Great American Hip Hop Debate Podcast, episode 144. And we are out.